Hey everybody, Jason Ellis here, Father Grind. It's my skateboard company. I teach people how to skateboard in a safe way. If you're a little bit older, you want to skate, you want to get healthy, you want to skate with your friends, maybe you want to skate with your kids. Do you want to do it and not go to hospital? I am the number one greatest skateboard teacher in the world. Yeah, if you guys want to check out the tutorial on how to skateboard, I teach the very funny Ian Finance, even Kim Condon. I teach her how to skate. Father Grind, I have skateboards. I got, you can get setups, you can get pads, you can get everything you need to shred. The Jason Ellis Father Grind skateboard made by Paul Schmidt. Tim Barron did the graphics. These are the top of the line in the skateboard game. This is a top of the line skateboard. If you want to be cool, get one of these. So go to fathergrind.com, check it out. Take my advice, I've got a video on how to skate safely so you can have fun and not go to hospital. Go to fathergrind.com. Now even now, my wife doesn't come, she sees me once a year. I do a St. Patrick's Did Day show. Did she ever go? Even when we started dating, a little more, but not much. She's never listened to one of my podcasts. You know, we have a domestic well, life and then I have a world where I go out and I talk about whatever the f I want. And the two she doesn't, she doesn't hear about any of it. She doesn't even know I like feet. Uh, can we oh, no way. You don't think that's a weird thing to not tell you? I mean, how's her feet? They're fine. Fine or good? They're good. Are they bad? They're not great. They're not bad. They're not great. Is They're not Asian. Bad. I mean, Asian is, is Asian what I, good. Asian are the best feet. Are they? Are yeah. They I don't agree with that. <laughs> God damn it, I look pasty. I what the f***? I don't think they're great. I like white people feet. And I don't like much about white people, but I like their feet. Yeah. Telly's got nice feet. I do. Really? Yeah, he'll tell you too. Oh, that's nice. Tara Patrick once tweeted about my feet. Get out of here. I mean, I kind of put and her She's up to Asian, it, but... so that's Whoa. telling you something. Oh, I, I co-hosted the Porn Awards with her one year. All right. It's yeah. a small world. She hates me. Why? Uh, I think she was best friends with another girl that hated me. I'm pretty annoying. Yeah. Really? There it is. Welcome back, Greg Fitzsimmons. I feel like, Welcome I, to the I, show, feel like I, I just faded into a dream sequence. Yeah, that's, that'll happen. I, I faded <laughs> it's like a, a Greg Brady wet dream yeah, just started. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and who's he? Is it Jan or <laughs> Marsha? <laughs> I was in a dream. I it might have been both. Yeah. I was in a dream sequence the other day. Your own? Yeah, yeah a real one, though. I went out and looked at the stars at night in the back of a truck on, a, on an inflatable mattress and I fell asleep and then I woke up and my chick was asleep. So then I was just in a, on an inflatable mattress in the wilderness looking at shooting stars as you would never do if you're me because I'm, you know what I mean? I usually don't like pussy shit. Yeah. But now I do because I'm sober. Right. And it got weird and eerie and like, I was like, whoa, the stars and like, you know, who's out there, man? Really think about it because look how many stars, we're on a star, right? Yeah. And then look at all those stars. There's no way somebody on isn't on a star. We're on a sun, near a sun, and we're those are all sun. suns. Yeah. And then there's planets around those suns. Don't get technical with me, Fitz dog. <laughs> all right? There could be people out there is what I was thinking. Don't make me feel stupid. No, I think it's uh, it's important that once in a while you go out there. And it's funny, as pe everybody thinks you got to take mushrooms or acid yeah, to I was have completely those sober. moments. You don't need, the, you no, don't you need don't. that. No. No. Yeah, that's another thing. You it don't actually need any... clouds those moments. It does. It's like a pussy. It's like a key to open the door quicker. But if you put in a little work, you can get there in a place where you're thinking clearer thoughts. Like instead of like, you know, is there other people out there and do they have, you know, uh, baseball cards? Like you think about something a lot more constructive. Like you know, like 
people out there are they are they like they're probably like us i mean what are, what are the chances there is another other civilizations out there they have trucks and inflatable mattresses and taxes and all the other bullshit and they're looking at us going hey man have you seen that but some people are just like doing coke and not even thinking about shooting stars or other people in space now they're just thinking about people on tiktok no and that other world that you're thinking of with the truck with the inflatable mattress on the back is called florida right yeah. which is not a not i i didn't like florida First, I liked Florida. Then I didn't like Florida. And I think I blame social media for it. They told me Florida was bad. But now I like Florida again. I love Florida. Yeah, what do you like about it? I love the tropical air. I yeah. like that feeling of... I love uh, tropical. Yeah. Yeah. I like I liked humidity. I me like too. to sweat. I like me to... Me too. You know, and I, Can I you like... Can you dance salsa? Huh? Can you dance salsa? My son does. Shut up. Yeah. He went to Cuba. I want to go to Cuba. Yeah. My coach is Cuban. He, he learned told how me to dance salsa. salsa dance in Cuba. He spent a month there, and he learned how to salsa. Under what circumstances month. did your son spend a month in Cuba? Well, he's he uh, he and my daughter both went to Spanish immersion from kindergarten through all the way through high school, so they're fluent. They're, we go to Spanish speaking. Can you countries. speak Spanish? Not at all. Why? Why does he need to? You've well, got a translator. Well, him and my daughter will talk about me in front of me in Spanish. Oh, so, and that doesn't make you want to learn. No, I think it's funny. I mean... If you learn Spanish, no one would expect it. Right. Because you are cracker-ass cracker, you know? Yeah, I mean, I speak French, but I don't speak yeah, Spanish. Yeah, of course you do. You yeah. Douche. Such a pussy God, language. You're such a, you had a Prius for a while, right? I did. Yeah. But you saw what I got now. Oh, yeah, you got a man. You just... Yeah, you just I know. I mean, don't do it. No, don't no, do no, it. no, no, no. Now, let me it's tell this story. It's a good mistake. Let good me tell mistake. this story. It's a I come in here. I, you're the manly man with I'm the not, tattoos and the such biceps. A, you're such a bitch. And so I always feel a little bit like, here's what I love. You love me. I feel I do. that. You I really do. do. I always feel have. your love. I feel yeah. your acceptance, even though we were very different people. And so there was a part of me that wanted to show you that I manned up. So I pull up my car. Sick I come car. Inside, Sick. It's a nice car. And I and I, and you you've always teased me about driving a Prius. And I go I go <laughs> have I I go come on out front. I want you to see my car. Yeah. And we walk out front, and there it is. He's got a mean Mustang. A Mustang. It's badass. It's got and mags I, on it too. And I yeah, and I said, you know, I've I've wanted a Mustang since I was a teenager. I've always wanted one. You go, and you waited this long. I go, yeah, but I did it, man. I did it. That's the main thing. And you said, it's a V eight, isn't it? Because, I mean, if you don't have a V eight, it's not a Mustang. <laughs> It's a Mustang with a Prius engine it's, in it. It's a six. It's a six. It's okay. It's a 305. It's got balls, man. It moves. And it handles great. Yeah. Does it handle great? It handles amazing. Mm. Yeah. What does that mean? Nah, they're pretty good. Have you driven one? Mm-hmm. And you don't love the handling? It's not bad. Okay. They've got better. Well. It's a bit... I'm coming from a Prius, like so you the can front imagine. End. It's going to be way better than a Prius. Yeah. Yeah. And you're saying, you said a 305. Yeah. Yeah. That's so not big. Is, is it a stick shift? No, but it's got the paddles on the steering wheel, oh, so you can shift with those. Yeah. Yeah. Those are pretty react. They react pretty quick. <laughs> like almost instantaneous. Yeah. Almost. There's a little bit of hesitation. There's a little bit. Huh? Yeah. It annoyed me. It's the first thing that annoyed me. Yeah. But I think about when you, when you get the, your dream car... And you start to find things you don't like. Like, I don't like the side view mirror. I don't like the hesitation when I use the paddles. Yeah. But then you say, you know what? This is my girl. I love yeah. everything yeah. about her. Yeah. Maybe, you know, maybe there's things about her that aren't perfect, but it's part yeah. of the package. Yeah. I feel like some people out there, you know, have like supermodel girlfriends and stuff. Yeah. And I'm like, uh, you know, I guess my girlfriend is not a supermodel. But she's my girlfriend, right? And I love her. Like, and I'm, I'm and I'm not Brad Pitt, you know. No, but I'm me. Isn't that yeah. for Greg? I think it makes you love them more. Like your cat. Thank you so much. Right. Your cat. That's is, a perfect. Yeah, he if, is. If you can love magical. that cat, yeah, it, it 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 brings out a deeper empathy and compassion in you when you love an animal that looks like that. He's got little arms. I guess this is fair. I attack your cat. You attack my cat. I see what's going on here, but. He's got a little arms. He's a midget. And he's got no whiskers because he's hairless, so he's got less balance. Um, and he's white. And if he's in the sun too long, he gets sunburnt dramatically. Like, he's pretty... He's like you, Greg. Like yeah. He cannot stay in the sun for long periods of time. Right. Unless he wears a Hawaiian shirt. 
Much and, like you, Greg. And, <laughs> <laughs> and, and they, they, they both look just as adorable when you do. But you've got he's very similar to you, Greg, because he I have no whiskers. He's recently been introduced to a big dog, Blue Healer. Big dog. And a big dog who chases cats for a living. And he was like, What's up, cat? Like I chase cats. And my cat was like, Oh, you can try. But if you go, just know we're dancing. Yeah. And I was like, dude, you have no virtually no arms. Yeah. And he was like, I I give a shit, Dad. Like this arm, like he's if he gets in striking distance, yeah. this widow arm will smack him in the mouth. Yeah. And he was like, ah, ah. And I was like, I respect that. Dude. Wow. I respect it. The, the, and then he chased him out. Like he chased him, chased that dog around. And that dog is seriously, no exaggeration, 25 times the size of my What cat. kind of dog is it? A blue healer, which is like, yeah. it's a shepherd, an Australian shepherd sure. dog. But this one is a red healer, which is, it's just like the ones are, there's like a gray one and then there's like a reddish one. So. Yeah. It's a blue healer. That's really all you need to know. But I grew up with blue healers. My first, my my fam, like my my buddy when I was a kid was Popeye. My mum rescued a, a blue healer. And they, they tried to kill the dog by hitting him in the head with a hammer and it blew his eye out. So he just had a fur patch over one eye and we called him Popeye. And Popeye was my friend. Like we used to hang out. Like I got a, a piece of my tooth missing because we were wrestling in the backyard and his tooth hit my tooth. Really? And chipped my tooth out. Yeah. Damn. But I used to throw bricks at half bricks at his head and he would catch them. Oh. And that was like a little, you know what I mean? Like you're back in the, you know, your kid throw rocks at your dog. Yeah, how does one the, find out that their dog can catch a half a brick? I used to throw wooden bricks at him and he would catch those okay. and bring them at me. And then I was like, and then I was like, I'd just throw whatever was on the ground at him. Right. And I found half a brick and I threw it at his head and he caught it. And then I, I worked on it, and then I went to show my mum. Hey, mum, look at this. Popeye grab, <laughs> catches bricks with his face. And then she was like, don't do that. And then he caught it. My mum was like, all right. And then you know, I would show people at parties because yeah. we'd be drunk in the backyard. And then, I don't think that would have gotten out to Letterman's stupid pet tricks. Yeah. Yeah, no, you, you're right. Well, you know, th- we didn't have Letterman. You know? Yeah. We had. Who did you have? Hey, hey, it's Saturday. Just one night a week. Yeah, and it was Hey Hey It's Saturday with man, what was his name? He had a he had a mascot. I don't know if he talked. Big monster looking guy, like a puppet monster guy. Yeah, and people used to tackle him, or he tackle people. One time, the monster guy played with kangaroos, and the kangaroo didn't like him. Yeah, and the kangaroo attacked him. And we laughed and laughed and laughed. It was probably the funniest. <laughs> Segment of television that I'd seen up until that day. Can you try to find him? Amazing. Hey, hey, it's Saturday. Kangaroo fights. It's a stuffed thing, right? It's a guy in a costume. Mm-hmm. Oh, he beat up the guy in the costume, not the host. Nah, yeah, oh. yeah, yeah. 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 The guy in the costume was like he had a big monster face. I forgot he, he had a name. Yeah. yeah. But he didn't talk. He had no voice. What? That's black and boxing. I'm, I'm not that old, dude. Jesus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's hey, hey, it's Saturday. And then, why do yeah. I feel like that guy's name is Bert? <laughs> yeah, but look, this kangaroo doesn't like this guy. Yeah, and you can tell. Look, he looks at him. He's like, I don't like that guy. And the uh-huh. guy, and the the puppet guy is like, Come on, kangaroo! And the kangaroo, oh. look, the kangaroo's getting pissed. Like when he does Shit. the rear end thing. Yeah, look how big that kangaroo is, dude. That's a, that's a red kangaroo. Yeah, but watch as soon he just gets a hold of him and ta- he takes a look at him and then he just grabs. Look, he's got he's got him. He's like, I'm not letting. Yeah. He won't, and then when the guy tries to get him off, he attacks that guy. Like he's like, I just want to kill this guy. Look at it, look at him. He's eating his face. He's fighting. Yeah, yeah like it's a, it's a fight. Damn. Yeah. And the guy, look, he wants to. He wants him. He wants him so bad. But I remember as a little boy, I was like, this is the greatest television. Look, he knocked him down with a shot. Took him down with a with a left jab. Because I never liked that monster guy. I mean, he was always pissing me yeah, off. Yeah. And then when the kangaroo beat him up, I was like, this show has become the greatest show yeah. on television. That's amazing. Yeah, he was a good, it was a good show. It was a variety was show. Yeah, because it was also like drunk Aussie ha- hangover like humor. Did he have comics on or panelists or anything? <laughs> panelists that were, I don't so, not so much stand-up, more 
variety show people that were funny. Yeah. They, we used to was, have a ton of those people in our culture, right? Like the Paul Linz of the world. Yeah. They, would just, they would just be on talk shows and it was their job to talk to hosts and be outrageous and funny. Yeah. Yeah. Russell. Yeah, exactly. Some of them were comics, but many of them weren't. All of the Hollywood Squares people. Yeah. Like the Pizzadoras uh, of the world. Yeah. We had Blankety Blanks. Yeah, right. Sure. Which was... Match Game? Match sure. Game. Yeah, that Richard Dawson. Everybody then, smoked cigarettes on the panel. Yeah. You were allowed to drink and smoke. It was like almost required to have a drink and a cigarette right. at your table. And it was totally acceptable that the host was buzzed. I think they had a liquor cart on Johnny Carson. And Johnny Carson had for a liquor years. cart. Yeah. And, uh, then, uh, and then guys like Dick Cavett would have people sit down for like an hour and a half. I know. John Lennon and Jimi Hendrix. And meanwhile, That's he was so this sick. erudite Yale graduate. Dick Cavett was, you know, he wrote books. He was yeah. a very intelligent guy. Yeah. But he could hang with Hendrix. But he didn't try to be like them. He, he really stayed himself. He would ask kind of corny, like yeah. deep questions. Yeah. But he wasn't trying to be cool, and that's what made it really work. Dick is a weird name to have. It was a weird era of the world where there was a guy that was a pretty cool dude, and his name was Dick. Yeah. It's a weird era, you know? Hey, everybody. Jason Ellis Show, sponsored by Blue Chew. I would buy Blue Chew. I would live in a Blue Chew house if they would build one for me to live in there. I stand firmly... Just like my Johnson, all heart, firm. You know what I'm saying? Maybe a little more than firm. I'm talking rock hard, Gibraltar. I flick koalas back up in trees and save them from forest fires. You know what I'm trying to say? Good. Blue Chew is a unique online service that delivers the same active ingredients as Viagra, Cialis, and Levitra, but at a fraction of the cost and in chewable form. These days, seems like people can't agree on anything. America is a house divided. Folks... That which unites us is so much stronger than the things that divide us. We all love beer. We Most of us love hamburgers. And we can all agree on a rock hard Johnson. Hell yeah. Joe Biden should have taken a couple. Does it work? Don't think you need it? Try it free for a month and see. You're going to love it. You could be missing out on the best sex of your life. Or the best masturbation. Shout out to the gooning population. Blue Chew wants the entire country rock hard. Rock they hard. They told me that. Get I hard. asked them to stop calling me at 2 a.m., but it was pretty important. I will grant them that. That is their mission. They will not stop until every man is bricked up like a brick house, till every tent is pitched, till every rod is raised. Discover your options at bluechew.com. And you want cheap boners? we got a special deal for our listeners. Try Blue Chew free when you use our promo code Ellis at checkout. Just pay $5 shipping. That's bluechew.com. Promo code Ellis. To receive your first month free, visit bluechew.com for more details and important safety information. And we thank Blue Chew for sponsoring the podcast. Well, what about the, the, the guy who invented surf rock? Open the door for the Beach Boys and wait. Well, uh, what about Dick, him? Uh, Dick, Dick Dale? Dick Dale. What's wrong about what's weird? I'm saying he, you're talking about how it was cool back then to be named Dick. The coolest guy. He was out like there one was of the coolest Dick. guys ever. Yeah. That was when white guys had a chance of being cool. Yeah. It's pretty hard to be cool now. Oh no, that's not true. Jelly Roll's pretty cool. Jelly Roll's cool. And he's a big fat white guy. Yeah. He, he's not very cool looking, but he is cool looking. Tom Waits is pretty cool. Yeah, but that's that was then. You're talking about new cool guys? Yeah. Post Malone's cool, right? But some black people don't think he's cool, which I kind of like. I don't think Post Malone's cool anymore. Oh, yeah? He, I don't understand this. I mean, I, I never, you know what I mean? I yeah. got no beef with Post Malone, but I just don't care. Post I think Malone it's because I'm old. Yeah. Was, yeah. was the guy that, like, when you talk to older musicians, to, to, to not want to admit that they are old and curmudgeonly and out of touch and hate all new music, if you say, what new stuff do you like? Post Malone was just the name. Oh, right. Post Malone, I think he's doing some really interesting stuff. So that they Oh, uh, yeah. And then, yeah. Everybody, and then everybody... Kendrick Lamar was that guy about 10 years ago. Right. And then everybody brought Kendrick up... Kendrick Lamar. Kendrick Lamar. He's like cool. He's he's like a, annoying cool now. Yeah. Because of the Drake thing. Yeah. Everybody plays that song now. And I'm All like, right. if you play that song now, not like us, I I don't want to say I hate you. Yeah. Because I, I think it's a good song. It was funny. Good. You got him. And, and I, I just think... No shit, Drake sucks, dude. Yeah. Like I, I'm not cool, and I'm old, and I knew that he sucked 
from the get go. It made and now Kendrick and, so much less cool that he engaged with him at all. It just, but it, Kendrick's like all of a sudden everyone's like, "Yeah, Drake's a douche," and I'm like, "You're a douche yeah. for not knowing he was a douche the whole time." Yeah. Knack. Can- like he's Canadian. Suck. Yeah. Yeah. Like he's sucky. He wear like weird ass like jumpsuit shit and like chest protectors on stage. You fucking suck, dude. Yeah. You're the sketches of hip hop. Like There's, you fucking suck. It's so balls. rare that somebody really cool comes out of Canada. Norm Macdonald was very yeah. cool. Yep. Um, and he was cool because he wasn't trying to be cool. Yes. Either. Let's think. Who are the cool Canadians? I have. That's it. No, there, there's other people who would definitely get a pass. I have always been somewhat mystified by the enduring success and respect uh, that Neil Young enjoys. Oh yeah. I don't think he sucks, but I don't understand what makes him. He's like no, one of those guys who I love like, Neil Young. Yeah, Neil Young's pretty cool. Yeah. All right. Neil Young's the real deal. Um, I would say. Uh, uh, Keanu Reeves, he's Canadian. Har- Harlan, Wait, Keanu Reeves is Canadian. Harlan Williams is very cool. Oh, Keanu Reeves is the coolest Canadian. Can I, Keanu Reeves is the coolest dude in the world. Yeah, he's very cool. Like American, anything. He's the coolest dude. I think on a comedy level, they've always been uh, proportionate. His eyes were a little beady. They've always been proportionately represented. Oh, makes yeah. sense now. You know, I remember somebody asking Norm Macdonald that. They said, "You seems like there's a lot of funny Canadians," and he's like, "No, I think you know." He's like, "I think about ten percent of the." successful comics in in the english speaking world in america are canadian and he's like we have about 10 one tenth the population of you folks so we're that's just about right but yeah. i don't know that they have that i don't think the 10 percent of the cool bands come from canada no not, at not all. even no. close no. no they got the worst bands musically they, they suck dogs musically nuts. they they do suck yeah Drake, it's, a, it's a big fall off from Nickelback, neil young to like bare naked ladies sluggo like they're all terrible Joni you know? mitchell is mm. great Joni mitchell yeah who's that uh, she's a oh she folk singer from the sixties and seventies. She's like if Neil Young was a bimbo. Oh okay, well then that's pretty hot. She's like if Bob Dylan was, I, was well, a bimbo. Call her a bimbo. How is she a bimbo? I don't. I just. I. I. I Who's that? I just smell cheese off. Who's her. that no. frittata bitch? Who? Nelly Fartata. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Fartata. I can be cool with fart in your name, right? She fucking sucks eggs. <laughs> She might be the coolest person ever with, with the, the word, word fart, fart in her name. name. Yeah. Yeah. She's the coolest fart I've ever seen, for sure. Yeah. Or well, the coolest Canadian fart, at least. Yeah. Yeah, fuck that, bitch. Sorry, that was aggressive. You know what I mean? In the nicest mm. way possible. Yeah, no, musically they suck. Absolute dog shit. But that's like, you know, healthcare. You know, you don't have any hard times. You don't have hard times. You've got no soul and you can't write good songs. Leonard Cohen was always the guy they... I fucking hate that guy. I hate Leonard Cohen. Yeah. And I remember The Young Ones. You ever see The Young Ones, the no. English TV show? Uh-uh. Yeah, it's like this. someone was like, hey, you know, this is so boring, you may as well be a Leonard Cohen record. And I was like, who's <laughs> Leonard Cohen? And then I did some research and I was like, right, nice. That was yeah. pretty funny. Yeah. Yeah, because, yeah, he sucks. Yeah. He's, he is their Tom Waits. If you oh, took harsh. Tom Waits and you ran into the Canadian What a shipper. Stat. That's like, that's worse than saying Drake's the worst musician that ever lived. Yeah. I think Drake is like basically a Cybertruck. <laughs> like that's, how, that's my theory. It's like yeah. They both suck so right. bad. Right. But there's this weird thing where some of us were like, ooh, you know, and right. we got one. Yeah. But then you're going to look back. It's like FUBU, you know? I think he might be financially one of the most successful rappers of all time. Yeah, but that doesn't, you know what I mean? Yeah. Insane clown You could have said the same thing about MC Hammer at one point yeah. in time. Uh, right. He just, and if, but if MC Hammer had a like, Save some money or got some real estate, then he'd still be laughing. But he, you know, I mean, he gave all his money to his friends and his pants. What does he do now? Does he do reality shows? I think he's broke. He's got an OnlyFans or something. Yeah, I'm just making that up. Didn't he's you have OnlyFans at one point? I did. Thanks for bringing that up. Your car's a six cylinder, though, correct? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't know. Is that something we're whitewashing from your past? <laughs> I'm not gay anymore either. You know that? Really? Yeah. So you, you dipped your toe in the water. I dipped, dipped your more cock than my in toe the water. in there, dude. Yeah. And he dipped yeah. it in more than the water. Yeah. Yeah, hey oh. Yeah, no, I did that and then I quit. I got sober and then I realized that it's not really for what me. What was the moment you decided you weren't gay anymore? I mean, I had my suspicions. And I don't want to say I'm not gay anymore, because I'm you can't get out. You're bi. I'm 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 not bi either. I'm pansexual. This is like correct wording for it because i'm not attracted to guys or girls or i mean i'm into i think girls are hot and i find it difficult to not look at pretty girls when they walk by because i don't want to stare so i won't but i'm definitely arguing with my mind not to yeah but i've never had any problem not not looking at a guy because he's hot i'm just like i don't care Mm -hmm. kind of thing 
but sexually I can get, kind of get into anything. But now that I can, uh, I'm only interested in having a relationship with somebody that I care about, then sure we can have sex, but if, no more hoeing around. And at one point it was, I only wanted to hoe around. That's all I wanted to do. But I can see you being, I mean, look, what do I know about you really? But it seems to me a guy like you having gay experiences might have something to do with liking that the other, that the partner is aggressive and confident and has swagger also that there's something maybe huh. challenging and exciting about that. I just always wanted to try on everybody's shoes kind of thing. Yeah. Like I, wanted, wanted, I wondered what that's like, you know, and it would be more like, uh, you know, I, I, re- I was pretty sure I was going to die young, you know, like when I was doing a lot of drugs and then when I had a heart condition when I got older, I was like, you're probably going to die of a heart attack pretty soon. So, and I remember being on the on the bed, you know, and they're going to electrocute my heart back in and I was like, you're going to die. And if you live, then you're not going to live much longer. And I remember thinking, oh, you know, if someone's going to make fun of me for being gay and then I'm dead and, and like, why did I worry about their opinion right, of me? Right. So that kind of made me push that whole thing a little more than I probably would have. Cause I was like, well, you're TikTok, you know, I kept trying to have sex with everybody. Cause I was like, you're, you know, and then the more I couldn't do hard drugs then I couldn't drink as much. So then it was kind of what was left was sex. So I was trying to like have sex with everybody in every position and every kind of way. And, uh, have you ever tried this? No, I haven't. And some of the things that uh, were recommended to me, I remember thinking, no way. And then I tried it and I was like, wow, that is actually something I really like. I can't believe I almost never did that because it's uncool to the norm, you know? So that then I just was like, I'll try anything. Mm. But I think the the real thing was I just use all this stuff to run and not face reality. Yeah. And once I became, that's the difference between being sober and then doing the work and being sober. And when I started to actually do the work, I became kind of obsessed with that, like getting to the bottom of it. Like, what mm-hmm. is the real problem? Oh, why do amazing. I react to all that's these great. things? Yeah. So then when I started to know a little bit more about why I operate with the things I do and things I've done in my life, I was like, wow, I, I don't think I'm actually into that at all. I think mm-hmm. I was just sort of doing that to kind of run from the facts of some of the stuff from my childhood and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. And then when I like, like pulled it all away and was sort of free from it, I no longer had the itch to, to do those things. Cause I can, now I could do it. I'm, you know, I was single, divorced, living in a house by myself. I could do everybody if I wanted Mm -hmm. to, and I don't want to. Yeah. Same as I could do all the drugs. And that was the other thing when uh, there's been many times I've been cyber sober in my life and I've watched other people drink and I'm like, is that, that good? That tastes good, you know. And I'm, and then I'll go home, feel sorry for myself. Mm-hmm. Now, I'm happy that you can have a beer, man, or you can smoke a joint. I'm happy for you. I really am. Mm-hmm. I don't want to. I don't yeah. care about it at yeah. all. And it's the same with sex. I don't like. Oh man, you could have a threesome tonight. I'm like, yeah, I, I could. I just don't want to. Yeah, like I haven't, I haven't had a drink in 34 years. And no, wait, are you sober? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. And I. Wait, you smoke weed though, don't you? Uh, I did for a while. I had a, I had didn't a, you have like a weird I... pickleball weed smoking thing. Pickleball. Didn't, yeah. you say, didn't you say you used to go down to the beach and play Venice? paddle tennis? Oh, right. yeah, 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 yeah. My bad. Right, yeah, right, right, right. I know, right. Don't be, <laughs> don't be giving Telly that smoke because he got pickleball yeah, wrong. Out yeah, of yeah. Beach um, tennis or whatever the hell. No, and I, uh, I do occasionally do mushrooms, but I haven't had a drink in, so I wouldn't call myself sober. Right. I am non-drinking. And yeah. to me, it just felt like, because I tried to stop a bunch of times before I was able to. Yeah. And I just realized it's a switch. Like at a certain point, <laughs> you just close the door. You just go, oh, I don't drink. And once you, once you uh, view yourself as a non-drinker, it's not a challenge every time it's presented to you. You don't debate uh, it every time. How did you get to that switch? I went to Al-Anon. I okay, went to you AA. did some work. Yeah, 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 yeah. Al-Anon to me was a more profound program. It went way deeper into my childhood stuff, my father's alcoholism, yeah. my abuse. And it made me feel like, uh, I don't know, like AA meetings, because I quit when I was so young, I was only like 24 when I stopped. Oh, wow. But I started when I was like 12, and we, we got fucked up like every day for, uh, you know, and so when I stopped, um, something about AA, I felt like I had a shallow bottom. And I was in Boston where these guys would come in and go, and then I sucked a dick for a sandwich. And I'm in the back and I'm like, I can't, I can't relate yeah, to this. Yeah. This isn't, you know. But I'd go to Al-Anon meetings and I'd find people that were more 
um, really looking at the cause of it rather than yeah. the white knuckling. Yeah. You know, yeah, because I, 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 I mean, I, st- I say it a lot now. I feel like I don't, I don't think it matters if you're an addict or not. I think doing the program is like getting to the bottom of who you really are yeah. makes you a nicer person to the rest of us. Right. Because I feel like, you know, I understand what it's like to be in it. And, and, and you know, hearing those stories where you just said that the suck of the dick for a say, those ones, like when I first started going, I was like, man, because there's, there's people that have said they're on Skid Row talking to themselves and now they're a sponsor of other people. And I'm like, Wow. Yeah. Like, because I, I always figured if you're talking to yourself on Skid Row, you ain't coming back. Uh-huh. And if this guy's telling the truth, that is amazing. Yeah. You know, and then, you know, gang life and people that have come back from, you know, the fucking dead, you know, like real, real bad. Yeah. Make me feel like I got, like, you know, light, I got a light sentence for what I got. And, yeah. I, and I've done some, you know, I've been in some heavy shit, but some people's, like, how they got sober is a miracle. Mm. It really is. Yeah. But learning about yourself and how other you know how the things that happen to you in child in childhood that can make you react this way for the rest of your life if you don't tend to it mm-hmm. like really get down to the bottom of it and and adjust then you just stay on this path until you die mm-hmm. a miserable sad existence and you pass it down to your children right well that's the, the I think that's the one thing I'm most proud of in my life is that I I didn't pass this because I know that my grandparents were alcoholics everybody uh, was and I stopped yeah. the cycle. Yeah. Not just the drinking, but also the, you know, um, I think minimizing, like, uh, you can minimize your child and make them feel like they're insignificant. Yeah. And um, putting yourself in a position of power where you demean them. Uh, I didn't do that to my kids, and I see the difference in them because of that. And I feel like that's the thing I'm the most proud of. That is the most important thing you can do. Yeah. So good for you, man. Yeah. Did you go on vacation with them recently? Yeah, well, no, actually, me and my wife just had our 25th anniversary, so we went back east. Congratulations. Uh, thank you. And we, we went all around Vermont, New York. and But, um, no, we vacationed with the kids a lot. We went to Mexico for the Total Eclipse back yeah. in March. Yeah. And uh, spent a week down there with, like, him and 20 of his friends. They all met up. Uh, he had just spent six months in uh, Mexico and Guatemala, just him and a buddy traveling around, taking, they call them chicken buses. So cool. Because you just get on and people have chickens in their yeah. laps. <laughs> I love chickens. And did you ever did, ask them why the people feel the need to travel with chickens? Chickens are fun. They're going from town to town. They're farmers. But why do they Why do they bring the Cause chicken? Because like no, nobody at home would I feed think, it for them? I or? think it's like a wallet. You, like you go somewhere and you can buy <laughs> something with an egg. So that's your wallet. That's your purse. Is that really your yeah. theory? <laughs> okay. <laughs> I thought you meant a wallet like they keep things in the chicken's ass because that makes just as much sense. <laughs> yeah, they keep hey, What do you get for an egg? Like a, a piece of ham. For right. lunch. Sweet trade. Yeah. You'd want to have it. It's an like extra a Mexican egg. O. Henry story. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How often do chickens. I came town with nothing but a chicken in my lap. How often do chickens lay eggs? Every day. Bullshit. Every day. You can get an egg out of a chicken every day. Yep. One a day or? No, it depends on the chicken. But like sometimes like four eggs a day. I don't know about that. Because you got to feed the chicken some something, right? What's weird is I've never totally under chickens also knows pullets lay eggs once every twenty four to twenty six hours. Son of a bitch! Yeah, he's, he's in Venice. You really only yeah. need one chicken to live. All right. I gotta get a ch- man. You should get a chicken. I want to get a chicken. I'm not even joking. I've always wanted to get a chicken. Don't get a rooster because that'll annoy the shit out of your neighbors. Yeah, no, I don't want to do that. But I met somebody. That I went horse. I ride horses now. I'm gonna get a horse when I'm rich again. I'm gonna get a horse. My girlfriend's got a horse, so mm. I, I want to be a cowboy when I grow yeah. up. And then I met this lady. Her husband is like a horse professional, like rides them for, I don't know, competes with them and all that. He knows a lot about horses. And his wife loves chickens. And she has like all the kinds of chickens that you could ever have, oh. all in different coops. Uh-huh. And she was like, do you want to meet my chickens? Because I heard someone told me about her and that she goes to the supermarket with a chicken stuck in her titties. Uh-huh. Like her favorite chicken <laughs> sits in her, in her cleavage. Uh-huh. And she goes to the supermarket with the chicken. And I was like, I respect anybody that is that tight with the chicken. Yeah. I mean, I know that this lady and I are going to be friends. So I go, hell yeah, I want to meet your chickens. And it's like late at night, and then she takes me into all these dark areas where all these chickens all hang out, they sleeping, and they come alive. A, a turkey tried to have sex with my leg while I was meeting furry chickens. It was an extravaganza of roosters wow. and chickens and shit. You sure it wasn't a guy dressed as a turkey? I got up pretty close. It was a turkey. Yeah. Yeah. I saw into his eyes. He had eyes like a doll. Wow. Yeah. Maybe you should get a turkey. I'm not into too. turkeys. No, no. No. 
No, thank you for mentioning that. But yeah, I came up pretty close with a turkey enough to know that I am not interested in uh, living with a turkey. Yeah, I didn't like him or the way he smelled or the whole. It, what he okay? Did I laugh when he was boning my leg? Because I moved my leg away because I was like, dude, stop fucking my leg. And then he he's. It's too stupid. He just kept pumping the, mm. the air. Yeah. And I was like, you've kind of lost it, homie. You know what I mean? He's like, oh, and his neck's all wobbling and shit. They are gross looking dudes. Yeah. I don't, even, I don't want to eat. They're nice in the wild. I, I like when they yeah. cross the road in front of you when you're upstate. I don't want to eat a turkey ever again. Really? Yeah. After that experience? Yeah. And not because I like turkeys to like be my friend. I just don't want to eat your meat. You're disgusting. Yeah. I don't really want to eat a pig either. It's so weird. I fucking love eating turkey, and I literally only do it on Thanksgiving. Once a year. It's available all year. Do you think that's year. why yeah. you like it, though? No, I love, I like love you dark you meat. you turkey every day, you would be like, I'm sick of turkey? No, it's like a whole week. You, you First you eat the leg at, at dinner, and then the next day you make like a turkey tetrazzini with pasta. Tetrazzini? Then, yeah. I don't know what, what happened. It's like a, you put like a mushroom soup and pieces of turkey and cheese and uh and it's you put a it soup? all no it's like a pasta it's like a baked pasta uh, yeah it kind of sounds fun i guess and then you make sandwiches with it all week but then it's almost like tomato juice i'll drink tomato juice on a plane I and it's you were the gonna only say time i drink tomato juice that's the it's most got a lot of salt in it so it's good for electrolytes right oh is that why you do it when you fly that's why my girlfriend does it interesting but when she said that, I was like, yes, yeah, salt. Because I was like, you're not getting tomato. Usually tomato juice on the plane, it's that V8 bullshit. Mm -hmm. It's not just tomato juice. It's a bunch of other shit in there. Yeah. But they probably put a lot of sodium in there. Right. Yeah. Salt is like some sort of electrolyte thing, you know? It is weird, though. Like, I make turkey all the time. I enjoy eating. Oh, you do? I make, like, my own turkey to make a turkey sandwich. Because ah. once you figure out how to do it, you're like, why am I giving those assholes at yeah. the grocery okay. store all my money? But, like, I do understand how we fell into this pattern. Even though we like turkey, but we only have it once a year. There's a whole goddamn holiday based around it. The tomato juice thing is strange. Like, why is it that half of the tomato juice in our country is consumed on Delta? Yeah. None yeah, of it's I, I do at it. ground level. And when I was a kid, I did the same thing. I would literally look forward to going on the plane mm -hmm. so that I could get some tomato juice. When was the last, when's the last time you ale. ate popcorn outside of a movie theater? Oh, don't get me started, Greg Fitzsimmons. I make, I make popcorn. excellent popcorn. Oh, and you right. know what's no, weird? Right, a so gypsy you... lady told us that our kids were going to love popcorn, and she was fucking right. Yeah. This gypsy lady. That's not that difficult. Yeah. She yeah. Nailed, she nailed, well, she nailed it. She kids love popcorn. Yeah, no, no, yeah. that's true. She nailed two things that were pretty remarkable. My wife was pregnant with our first child, and she said, you're actually supposed to have a daughter first, but you're going to have two kids, and I can see the daughter is telling the boy to go first, and she'll wait and come after him because he needs, like, the TLC of being alone with you for a while, and we did have a boy and then a girl. Yeah. So that's kind of odd. The popcorn thing, granted, that's a little bit more. Yeah. Kids do 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 like that. But no, I make some. I make mean fucking popcorn. I make popcorn like twice a week. Do you cook bro. Greg Fitzsimmons? I'm like a breakfast cook, but now yeah. my wife broke her foot, so for the last three weeks I've made three meals a day. How'd she break her day. foot? Kicking your ass? Yeah, we were riding bikes on Venice Beach, and she went over a curb, and she's she's a klutz. My wife's a klutz. Right. And she not an athlete her... like yourself. Nope. All right. Broke her foot. Uh, How do you break your foot going off a curb? She doesn't remember. She went over the handlebar. She got a big oh, bruise on her leg. Went. Yeah, she landed hard. She, she went over the bars. She kind of blacked out. She doesn't remember what yeah, happened. Yeah, fair enough. Going over the bars, is, that's yeah. a hefty slam. Yeah. Broke her foot the week before our wedding. She, she's broken her foot four times now. Wait. Wait, so this was the 25th anniversary? Like, Did you get married No, we again? just got back from the 25th trip. But you said she broke her foot on a wedding, before a wedding? Before our wedding, she broke her foot. Yeah, twenty-five day, twenty. So when you were going to get married, she broke your foot. Yeah, and twice in the interim. Fucking. Fuck. This is the no four. four yeah, yeah, my four phone times total. So what? Four times total. Has this yeah. made her? I am a wolf. Has this made her feet more or less attractive to you? They're adorable because they got a little uh, bandages, a little bandage on them. Tell yeah. you, maybe you could send him a photo of your foot so he could jerk off to that instead of his wife's. Yeah, we've just recently learned that you're a. Uh, foot guy i'm not a foot guy i, I appreciate a nice foot that's i'm not a, that's a, a foot, guy. That's a, that is a foot guy. guy well yeah. i've never acted on it i've never like kissed you just a told foot. us that you're into it i like looking at them you ask me if i'm into feet are you into feet no do you look at them 
Have I seen? Okay, here's do you appreciate a nice foot? I appreciate anything. A that's nice, nice. Ha- high arch, a nicely rounded. <laughs> you're, a chub. Chub. you're a You're fucking foot guy. You got weird. He's like 20%, yeah. You're like twenty percent chub. Just saying. Yeah, 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 yeah. You got tingly for sure. The arch. Here's my thing. If you wear sh- girls wear sh- high heel shoes, I will judge you on the way your toes are. Yeah. If your toes hang off, I'm like, oh man, come on. Yeah. Right. But I don't. I've never seen a girl's foot where I go, oh, absolutely not. I don't care. Yeah. Well, Actually, me- if it's a bit rowdy, might be a bit more into it. I like deformed people. Like, there's this girl fell on Instagram. She's got one leg, and then she got like this many fingers. On one hand, and then the other one has, like, maybe, I think, this many. You sure she's she- not just in a gang? <laughs> no. No, no, no. No, it's, it's, a, it's a congenital shaka? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's congenital shaka. But it's, like, one of her... Her pinky is not a pinky. It's, like... How it's fucked like up a, would it be if she grew up in a neighborhood where there was gangs and that happened to be the signal? Yeah, she was born gang? to be the leader. Yeah. That's what I would think. <laughs> but, but she is hot. Super hot. And the stump and the deformed hands... Have you reached out to her? No, I'm taken. Okay. But she's... If I was single and she was slid into my DMs, I'd be like, oh, thank you, God. So this isn't like the last relationship where the door was a little bit open to others. Oh, okay. This is monogamous? Oh, we're going, we're going, yeah, no, nah, yeah. Yeah, after I got divorced, I, do, I went deeper into that world. Yeah. And I figured out, not for me completely right but then i but then i had to like okay you know because you're a cheater you're, you're, and you're not a cheater on purpose you just get stuck in things where you, you just like shiny stuff and if someone's half holding something there then you're gonna take it yeah you know? and and people would offer me sex a lot you know because right. i've got an accent and stuff so i'd always kind of find it hard to not take them up on it and then i you know, had to like can you actually have a relationship and not want to bone other people yeah. you know and it's all say it was the same as can you actually live a life where you don't drink or smoke weed you know because so far that has been proven to be a no mm-hmm. you know yeah so i really worked at that and you know, i had a couple of starter kits had a couple of relationships where i was like this is not really going anywhere but let me just try to like be faithful to this person mm-hmm. and then i was like okay i think you might be you might be ready and then and then I, you know, really, like I said, I just really analyze what I'm about. What am I? What am I really into? Yeah. Am I do? Who am I doing this for? Because it's like if I, bo- you know, I think maybe common sense from being sober, where it's like, go on, do her, and then wake up in the morning. You know how you feel when you do mm-hmm. that. Yeah. And and I think right. maybe being high all the time, you you just do it and then wake up with regret and you think. Uh, well, I won't do that again. And then you completely just forget that you thought that and well, you think, do it again. Well, I think a lot of it for me was realizing that when I was reaching for a drink, something was going on. And so I started to have this um, uh, neurologically. I just started to go, all right, you're feeling that. What's going on? Look inside. Slow wow, down. Yeah. What is it? And you did that without going to ha- getting help. Well, I went to a lot of therapy. Okay. So you did get some advice. Yeah, I, I just basically realized that even to this day, like I feel it, like, and I meditate now. I work out. I know I don't look it, but I actually do work out. And How's your uh, shoulder, shoulder's bad. Uh-huh. I have a my fifth appointment to get. They're gonna blast it. They're gonna go in. There's calcium buildup in the joint, and they're mm. gonna blast it out. Blast the calcium out. Yeah, they're going in with a, some kind of a needle, and they're gonna just Ow. jab it out. Eh. Yeah. And then you should be. I hope so. I, can, I literally 100%? can't lift it. I can lift it forward. Hundred percent, or just years, just I, not in pain. I think not in pain. All right. I mean, at fifty-eight, I don't think you're ever a hundred percent after an injury. What about stem cells? Yeah. I know a guy. I just heard about that. Is it in the country? You got to leave I've been the country. To, yeah, Columbia. Yeah. There's other places that do it now hmm. that are in the country. I think the whole because insurance and all that they won't let you do it here because they so want you to crazy. do a surgery and take yeah, painkillers right, and right. pay a bunch of money. So crazy, yeah, but and they have studies in this country. It does. It works. It I, works. I, I had stem cells in my knees. Yeah, I couldn't run in it for a fight. I couldn't do sprints, and then I got stem cells. I skate again. Yeah, I'm 52 and I skate now. What was wrong with your knees? Did you have? Uh... I tore my PCLs off, and they ate. They my body ate them. So oh. I didn't have a PCL. Okay. And then I tore my MCLs 
and is that the meniscus? No, nah, that's in that's in the joint. So yeah. I, I I've I've got torn meniscus as well, but I've damaged all of them. And the, at one point, my left knee had eaten my PCL and my MCL. My meniscus is torn, and my ACL was stretched out. And the doctors in in, in Colombia said, "Look." we can only do so much. Like we're going to give you some stem cells and it's going to make it a little bit better, but you need a partial knee replacement because you don't have any ligaments. I don't, they said, do you do stuff? And I was like, yeah. And they're like, that makes no sense. Cause you don't have anything that's holding your leg together. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, it is pretty loose. Like I would move it and people would go, Whoa, that looks bad. I'm like, uh -huh. right. It does. Huh? Yeah. And then when I got the uh, cadaver MCL replacement, it just became so stable. And then I got stem cells over the top of it. And I, I really got like, like I skate, you know, not all the time. Cause I got to, I'm up here, but like I skate Tony's ramp and I, people laugh, but if you know me well and you know my story, when I knee slide, that's like when you fall off, uh -huh. if I knee slide and I go all the way across the flat, staying on my knees. Cause I have a habit of, I go to my knees and I flick to my hip and my back because I can't knee slide. Uh -huh. Cause I can't stay in a kneeling position. Right. Now I can, uh -huh. and I celebrate every time it happens. Like when yeah. I knee slide, I go, knee slide! Yeah. And people that know me go, yeah, I know why you're celebrating. So I'm going to Colombia. My friend went to Mexico. You are? Well, my friend's teeth were all fucked up. And uh, so he went down to Mexico, and it would have cost $60,000 in the U.S. to get new uh, new caps or bridges, whatever, with on his teeth. With insurance probably, too. With right? it, yeah, with it, the insurance doesn't do dental anymore. What is that? Why is no, that? they don't do your eyes. They don't do your teeth. It's like they're in my fucking body, aren't they? Yeah, how do they get to do that? So he goes down to Mexico and for uh, $7,000, he was there for a month because first they they shaved down his teeth down to little nubs uh. and then they made new teeth and they put on the tops and they put on the bottoms. Uh, $7,000, he came back to the States and uh, three months later we we're having dinner and uh, they all started falling out. <laughs> And now he's got like little nubs. Oof. And so now he's getting them done in the US. <laughs> do, you know, do you know who Perez Hilton is? Sure. I almost unfollowed him today. What'd he say? He's just got these calluses on his teeth and his bottom teeth. He's got some Wait, thing. What? He, say, he says like it's a thing that a lot of people get. And I'm like, Pfft. calluses? How got, can you get a callus? He's got like a plaque buildup of another row of plaque teeth. Oh. Uh, and I'm like, you know what it is, dude? It's because you're disgusting. Like, that dude's face just makes me not want to, like, live. His face, his personality. He's just a dick. He is a dick. Why do you follow him in the first place? Because he followed me. And I think I was, like, I was going to have him on the show or whatever. But he's got some new thing where he's in his car and he's like, so my dermatologist or somebody, it wasn't even a dentist. It was, like, something else said that this is a, look at this, oh. dude. It is so, I'm like, wait, are you showing people this? That's awful and it's just like what how did you let it get that like when it looks he like a shark he's got two wait till he pulls it teeth. back wait till he pulls it back it looks like he's got a, a tobacco dip in there but it's he's like it's just a thing tell me what you think uh, and i'm like what happened why are you how do you like, let it get to that yeah it looks like when you're look a kid you look eat, at that. and you stretch your gum what? across that's like homeless people shit dude you literally have a lip to cover shit like that like he is just so Gross. Yeah. And he's mean to people too. It's like, look at you. Well, yeah, he always, I'm being mean as well. I'm sorry, but well, he always was. Yeah. So that's what put him on the map. Was being I know, to be just... willing to be infantile in in, in insulting celebrities. Yeah, but he's like, literally he... just like drawing on people and being like fat bitch. Yeah, like that was <laughs> well, you know, Joan Rivers did that, and she kind of got away with it for a lot of years, like decades. Yeah. Yes, and then all of a sudden it was like you know, two thousand and you know. 13 and all of a sudden they were like you're mean and she's like but we were all just kidding around we were all joking right yeah but hers was a, at least there was a joke in it yeah there was like material you know uh -huh. it was like a roast right of sorts the rest of them was just you know because i'm doing my first roast in a couple of weeks and it's Are like you? yeah and it's like you could just write well you know fuck you you dumb bitch you know and like uh -huh. uh, uh, and i'm like well no it's got to be funny and witty it's got to have some thought put into it otherwise uh -huh. it's just talking shit yeah and that's kind of like you know there's there were john rivers who shared jokes you know yeah good about jokes it. who are you roasting angie strauss who is the roast champion she has a belt and because it's my first roast it's not a title fight 
it's just a roast where it's a friendly roast. Yeah, because she can't put her. Because I I need to pay more dues to be even in the running for a belt. So it's just a lamb to the slaughter. But you know, is this a comedy store thing? Yeah. Well, good luck, man. Yeah, I, I'm. I feel pretty good about. I it. I would help you write jokes, but I'm the. I have a crazy three weeks coming up. Oh, right, we'd well. love to help you out. Wow, thanks, dude. Even saying that is really cool. Why do you have a crazy three weeks? I have a special come come. Well, um, the special just came out. Right. So yes, it did, didn't it? So now I'm doing a <laughs> lot of promotion for it. Yeah. Yeah. You should promote it on this show. Well, listen, I, that, I love coming here and hanging out with you guys, and I don't think I've ever promoted something before. No. I usually just come on because I like to hang. But this is a, uh, it's a special that I've been working on since the pandemic. The material has been fucking worked out in cl- late show Fridays in Cincinnati up to you know early shows in the main room at the, at the comedy store. It's like material that I've beat it out that's just... It, I, I'm a comic. There's so yeah. many people with specials right now that they're fucking, you know, cross-dressing. And so they get a special after five years. This guy's been doing it 35 years. Yeah. How many specials have you had? Five. All right. When did you have your first special? How many years? 1996. Comedy Central. How many years were you a comedian before you had the special? Ten. All right. Is yeah. that good? I was good. I was a little ahead of the curve on that. All right. I was good looking when I was young, so they, there was a lot of female executives that used to book me on stuff. And that's why they, they were like, "Have a special." They asked you to. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Did you ever cough it up? No, I was married. Oh, that's too bad. Yeah. Look yeah. at me. Look at these pictures. Look at the hair on that guy. Yeah. What do you mean? Yeah. I think you look better now. No, oh, thanks, man. That's you. Yeah. That wasn't a good era. No. <laughs> I'm actually angry. Nobody told me to shave the orange beard off. Yeah. That 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 hurt my career a lot. Yeah, yeah I can see that. In the '90s, that. yeah, I didn't work a lot. I don't during. even know who that guy is. <laughs> yeah, he didn't know who he was. Right. So anyway, the specials it's out on YouTube, and it's uh, it's kind of, it's a, it's about my family, but it's also like gonna get flagged by Instagram, yeah, for by YouTube because I say all kinds of stuff you're not like you know they they kick you off the algorithm. Yeah. Yep. So I really need people that listen to me on podcast to go listen, comment, and try to try to. Keep it visible before they... Yeah. They don't want you saying anything. Yeah, I know. This show's on YouTube. And oh, is it? Yeah, and nobody gets to see it. Yeah, and you don't monetize. Because I'm me. Yeah. yeah. But you can't change. I mean, that's the thing about... I mean, you could change, but I don't want to. I don't want to either. I'll tell you what. How about we agree to you don't show me and I be me? Yeah. Fuck you. Right. Fucking cocksucker. How about that? So there, what are the, there we go. We're off the algorithm today. Yeah, yeah. What yeah. are the spicy sorts Without of... me, man. Yep. Yeah. What are the spicy topics that you're hitting that you think YouTube isn't like? I say like, a couple times, but I'm just making fun of how like every major football team is named after rapists, you know, like the Vikings and the Raiders. Oh, and, yeah. And so... Uh, and then, they uh, did. And then I talk about uh, Girl Scouts. I call them whores. Why are they whores? Well, because they're selling those cookies. Aren't they and good cookies? They're awful cookies. They're dried so I knew out. I somebody that shit. really liked those cookies. No. Were they lying? No. They're selling them all the time. They're not good cookies? No. I mean, they're, they're average, but, I, they, but you're buying them from a girl, so you feel really good about yourself. And then, and then you're walking Ew. back to your car through the parking lot. It's like an underage girl, isn't and it? And that black teenager walks up, so he's got a box full of Snickers bars. I won't buy that off of those guys. If that's my point of the joke. Yeah, and it's You'll like, buy the fucking Girl Scout cookies. It's all going to a corporation. I won't. They keep like 5%. The black kid's keeping all the money. I'm not giving any, any of them anything. Wow. Yeah. I don't like kids. You know? Well, then you live in the wrong neighborhood. Because oh, I almost school? couldn't get here because <laughs> of all the school kids. I know. It's like the goddamn out. Neverland Ranch out there. Yeah. yeah, but they don't mess with me. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> We know we know where we stand, you know? You stay over there and I'll stay over here. There's no way those kids don't talk about this house. They know this house. What do you mean? They know you. They've seen you. Yeah, but I don't I don't start shit with no, anybody. No, but you you appear in a menacing way. I'm a good way neighbor. To, yeah. Like I'm quiet. Right. You know? Like I look so like I bet chickens. you when I moved in people were like, "Oh god, here we go." Mm-hmm. I don't I don't do anything crazy. And you definitely don't want to like like break in. Yeah. And I got one, there's only one person I know who's my friend, an old lady next door. And she like comes over every now and then when I go to drive out of my driveway, she bangs on the window, scares the shit out of me because yeah. she's inside the house. She like comes in when I open the gate and bangs on the window and tells me about stuff. She does? Yeah, I think she wants it. How old is she? 
like 78 or something. Ooh. Yeah, nah. Well, What's I'm, the I, oldest? What's the oldest you ever been with? Uh, well, you know, that's not, you know, probably like 60 or something like that. But I would, I would have, not now, but I, one time I was at a uh, supermarket in Santa Monica and I used to, I was married to somebody where I couldn't do stuff like that. And this old lady was asked, asked me if I could help her reach something and I helped her. And then she was like, you're a handsome man. And I was like, oh, thank you. She's like, you remind me of that actor and we're talking and I realized she was talking about Jason Statham. I mean, you mean Jason Statham? She goes, yeah. She said, but you're better looking than he is. And I was like, yeah, thanks. And then she was like, um, do you want to... Can you take me to... <laughs> she wanted me to escort her to her house or something. And I was like, oh, she wants it, you know? Is it the supermarket? Yeah, and it was like... It was Did she the, pick up a cucumber? It was the it was the, the supermarket in Santa Monica that's like... It's like a private one. It's like... Oh, not, Bob's? A co-op? Bob's Market? Maybe a co-op because it's got like good granola and stuff. I used to be oh, in a granola. Oh, I know that place, yeah. Yeah. And it had Rainbow like, Acres? Yeah. Uh, yeah Washington? Yeah. 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 And, she, and then she wanted it. And I remember thinking... I ca- if I call my the person I was with at the time, she would be like, "If you, I think I want a divorce because you're bringing it up." Yeah. So I didn't bring it up. All right. But if I was single, I would have said, "Look, I don't think it's a good idea that I bone you because I don't know if you could take it." Mm-hmm. But I'll give you a show. You know, mm-hmm. yeah. I would have. I was gonna. I would have like jerked off or something, giving her it's a nice. show. Yeah. yeah, I would give her a charity jam for yeah, sure. That's very cool of you. Yeah, I would do it. Like if I. You know, at that age, whole, I don't know what you're laughing at, McCone. You know, it's, still a whole, at that I age, would, it's all anal. The, it's which the I'm anal fine with. Grand Prix. Yeah, I'm fine with that. Yeah, I'd give it to her any way she wanted it. Oh quite no, frankly. no, your your anus. She'd give me anal. Yeah, which is which <laughs> back then. <laughs> that zucchini's all for you, my friend. Why did he assume it was hers? If yeah. she wanted me to cucumber my butt. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I don't want to do that because I think there'd be a, a few moments there I'd be like, wow. I don't feel that great about this, Jason. Like, what have you done? But also, she's going to die soon, real soon. Uh, Maybe right now. And the least I can do is take a cucumber. Because I want to do that for people. I want I would take a cucumber to make an old person happy. And if she tried to tell somebody she did it to you, they would just think she had Alzheimer's. They wouldn't I would believe te- her. I'd be like, hell yeah. Like, like yeah. you want me to make a video that comes with it? I'll do yeah. a cameo for you. Yeah. Here you go, you old bastard. You I know? mean, think the thing about old ladies. I want to help people, they've man. They've done it all. Everything they haven't. Oh, she's a little late. She- I don't know that they have. Yeah, they really didn't do enough. That's why. Because in their why day, they, they were they yeah, were it was so frowned upon. Yeah, you know. I guess maybe you're right. These days, like when you get an old, like in 30, 40 years from now, some old ladies, you know, maybe they're going to be like, she's done it all. Yeah. But now, like an eighty year old now, she didn't do shit. Right, you know. Right. Have you guys seen the Golden Bachelorette? Of course, remember when he's no. talking about the Golden Bachelor. They had the the version of the show where they had an old dude oh, yeah, and all the old ladies yeah, they were trying an old lady? to. Now they got an old lady. I'm curious. Is she hot? Her... Yeah, she got a lot of plastic surgery. That's not attractive. How old is that lady? She looks like she should be in a real estate ad on a bus stop. Yeah. She looks like I mean, she's trying to she... sell me a house in the Hollywood Hills. Her face is a completely different color than the rest of her body. How does she really look? Yeah, that is the question. Because that's a painting. <laughs> I don't like it when they sell somebody up. Show me yeah. how old she is. You know what I mean? Like, right. you know, well, can we find her Facebook? Because she's got one. Yeah, for sure she has. You know, I find, Greg, do you find this as well? That I think I always like like girls my own age, and I could only, like, I used to really wonder about someday I'm going to be in my 40s and I'm going to be married to a lady and she's in her 40s, and I don't think ladies in their 40s are yeah. attractive. What am I going to do? And now that I'm in my 40s, like, I think my wife is totally attractive, and I'm up to like thinking 65. Is it like no matter what age I am, I'm into that age uh, and plus 25. No, I literally have a bit in this new special where I go, I can't believe I'm fucking a 58 year old right yeah. now. And uh, yet I want to. I think she's sexy as shit. Dude, I was. And then I hit know, on her and she says no. And I look at her like, you're fucking 58 years old. Well, yeah. Take it where you're taking all the dick and get it. Yeah. Someone brought up on Instagram today that I need to bring up that you and I are doing the same joke. Uh oh. Yeah, right? Because <laughs> he said, because uh, he saw me the other day and he goes, hey, man, ask Greg about his, because uh, I talk about gay stuff and I go, if anybody's got a problem with it and they want to beat me up in the parking lot, 
just know that if if I if it's more than two people that want to fight me at the same time, I take off all my clothes and I chew a bunch of blue chews and I jerk off and I get an erection and I fight you with a boner. Yeah. Do you talk about fighting somebody with an erection? In this special. Shut the yep. front door. Yep. Well, I just say, I say, I did it in Austin. I did it at, uh, at the mothership. And I said, uh, I said, you Texas guys, every time a fight starts, you rip your shirt off. I go, that doesn't scare me. When yeah. I get in a fight, I take my pants off. Because who wants to fight a guy with no pants and an erection? You Makes do people say, uncomfortable. You, you do say erection? Yeah. Because that's my theory. My theory yeah. is who would want to fight a guy with a boner? Yeah. Cause, cause, I mean, I've I've thought about that a few times. Where yeah. it's like, if, when you fuck, cause I try, I like try to lift weights with a boner, and I try. Have you really? Yeah, I can lift weights with a boner, but if I count how many reps I do, that's when it starts to mess with my erection. Uh -huh. But I can do a lot of weights. But if I if I go like one, two, three, by the time I get to seven, I feel my boner starting to like want to cut out on the yeah, game. Yeah, yeah. That's like so, one of those like think about baseball things. Oh. To not somebody taught me that years ago. Like if I was with a girl and I thought I was going to come too fast, like literally, I would try to be like, "What's like fifty six times one hundred and thirty seven? Yeah. You cannot come yeah. while you do that math." Wow. I yeah. used to try because I've never had gay sex, but I've well, I always want to say real quick, I didn't steal your joke. I didn't know you did. I don't it. think you did steal my joke, oh. and I don't have any issue with you telling it. All right. Well, I'll tell it with a different accent, and I and then I talk about <laughs> I actually like get you know ready to fight people as well. But, Look, I think there's a million comics, and I think that there's X number of premises out there. You know, we're going to repeat. People yeah. are going to come up with the same ideas. Well, it's an honor to be in the same realm as you, dude. Oh, well, thank you very yeah. much. I'm sure you do it better. But but still. Yeah. You know, it's a little bit of an act out. I, I, I cool. walk around the stage going like this with the, with the erection. But I was going to say, like, I've never had gay sex, but I've been open to it. And it was definitely... And I've told a story on your show about how I almost did once. And... um Quickly refresh our memory. <laughs> it was, it was in Boston. Uh -huh. I was in college. That's uh -huh. edgy. And I was reading. A rainy night with Dennis Leary. And I was an English major, and I was reading a lot of like uh, Emerson and Kerouac and Ginsburg, and there was a lot of That's homoerotic gay. stuff in it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so I and I and I love David Bowie and Iggy Pop and yeah. Mick Jagger, and those yeah. guys were all fucking each other. Yeah, and I allegedly. thought this is kind of cool. And so uh, I thought, you know, the only way I'm ever going to know is if I suck a dick. Yeah. I'm and trying to picture this. Is this when you were still in your Morgan Spurlock phase? No, what? there was no goatee right. then. No. And so uh, I, my apartment in Boston was across the street from the Fenway, which is the, you know, every, sit, every city has like a little wooded area that's for anonymous gay sex. Like no. they literally, they did like the Brambles in Central Park Man. and then the Fenway in Boston. Okay. And, um, I'm sure this parts of Griffith Park that where you go off. Into oh, there's the a park I was telling my girlfriend yesterday. We're looking at a new place to move into, and I go, "Oh, this is the park," and she goes, "This is the park what?" And I was like, "This is the park where uh, one time uh, somebody told me to go there, and you just walk through the bushes, and people tap you, yeah. and they just they all want to blow you." Right. So I walk into that woods, the Fenway. I'm drunk one night. It's like four in the morning, and I'm stumbling home. Yeah. And and it, I, I just wander in. I'm like, "All right, I'm going to do it." And so I walk through, and then uh, it's dark. It's like a fall night where there's shadows and it's yeah. spooky. And I don't know how this works. I don't know what the protocols are. Yeah. And so I walk in. Also, they'll teach you. Well, yeah. Especially a college boy. He kidding yeah, oh, me? Oh yeah, yeah. I was the pot of gold. And so this guy pops out from behind. And a tree. he looks straight. Yeah. They love straight boys. Yeah. Yeah. So he pops out from a tree, and he just looks at me. He's got his hands on his hips. I just look at him, and, and he was it was like this this like gay leprechaun. And so he comes up, and he uh, unzips his fly. Yeah. And he pulls out his cock. Yeah. And How then, is it? And then he reaches in and he pulls his balls out, and it looked it looked so gross and weird. Too much. And I just looked at it like, and I was just like, no, not gay. Right. And then I got scared because I was alone in the woods with him with his dick out. Yeah. And so I pushed him. Oh and man, he, come on! I know, oh, man. and he fell down. And then he ran off into the woods with his dick flopping, and I just like stumbled out of the woods, and I was like, "Oh, that's it. I'm not gay. Yeah. I may be a gay basher, but I'm yeah. not gay." Well, that's, that's you're so <laughs> not gay. You committed hate crimes against the gays. Yeah, at least you know you're a hater. <laughs> See, I feel like that to start your gay activities with blowing a guy is pretty gnarly. 
Like I, I got blown by a bunch of guys before I was anywhere uh, near going yeah, there because that yeah. was just like yeah. I was like I definitely don't want to do that. Same as kissing a guy. I'm like that's too gay. You yeah. Know? But after a bunch of drugs and a lot of people blowing me, and then I was like, all right, I'll give it a go. You know. You owed you yeah. I did feel like that. Yeah. That's a, that's how I ended up um, like topping somebody was because they kept asking me and I was like no like, it's like you, I'm not gay you know just uh-huh. suck it and get out of here. Yeah. And I was like, I feel bad, you know? Yeah. How bad can it be? It turned out not to be that bad. Yeah. But in the end, that's funny, that question that you asked me at the start of the show, like, when did I know that I wasn't, was when uh, I came, it came down to, there was only one person that I could hook up with, and I, it was a guy that I'm still friends with. I, I love him. He's a good dude. Um, and we used to hook up. And then he came over, and I, like, kind of retired from doing it with any other guy and i was like well you know he's still my friend and he came over and he was like you know let's hook up but i was like okay you know i didn't want to say no and then when we did the whole time it was happening i was like fuck this is it i can't do it Mm -hmm. i don't like it and i love this guy yeah he's a good dude i want to be his friend for the rest of my life Mm -hmm. i just don't want to have sex with a guy and i and i find him to be Again, you know, for a guy, attractive. Just not, you know, like I just, I don't find guys attractive. I yeah. never have. I never have either. But he was always like, I felt like he's a cute, cute dude. Yeah. That's as gay as I get. I could say that you're cute. Were you attracted to more manly gay guys or more f- uh, feminine gay guys? Um, yeah, more, not more. I don't like hairy guys. Yeah. I don't like stinky guys. Uh, I like fit guys. Mm. So more, man, if I had to pick a body, probably fuck a swimmer. Yeah. You know? Not like, a... A guy with a, with a tight haircut, good yeah, cheekbones. I like a pretty face. But like the real girly, real girly guys, uh-huh. nah. Yeah. I don't like that. What about a lady boy? Would you ever consider that? Oh, I used to bone the hell out of that. Oh, you did? So you mean a transgender? Well, I just think of like Thailand and the. Yeah, you know, the... I boned some some lady boys in Thailand too. You did? I did with my ex. We used to we went there and tagged half the city. No. <laughs> yeah. Somebody told me they did that and they <laughs> Ping said ping pong balls and all. They said whatever you do, don't fuck with the uh, lady lady hey, put boys. Put a on your beer. Right? Yeah. No, no, no. They like, really if... called it Bangkok after these two <laughs> left. <laughs> <laughs> Empty cock. <laughs> Isn't it interesting, Greg? Um, Sorry. We're, we're not the exact same age, but like how crazy brain fucked we all were about homosexuality and bisexuality. Because you're sitting there going, well, shit, I like Kerouac a lot. Uh-huh. Maybe. Am I, am I missing out on something? Am I completely lying to myself about wanting to do that? I remember a period of time where I was in high school. I was friends with two girls and they would and I went to an all boys school so they would come by at the end of school and we would hang out outside and because I was so often seen hanging out with girls who were so clearly not my girlfriend yeah. the rumor started that I must yeah, be gay right. and I took that information when that rumor reached me and was like oh am I like like it's so fucking crazy it, the last thing that would occur to any of us is do you fantasize about having sex with men? When men walk past you on the street to go, I would like to have sex with uh-huh. them. This would be the simplest way of gauging whether or not you might be homosexual right, or not. Right. And that was not the way yeah. we even thought. We were so brain fucked about mm-hmm. it. It's so insane. Yeah, it's and just the idea that, you know, we everything is gay, pussy, you know, like all the making fun of everything that's gay. And if you are gay, like, I just can't imagine the torture that would be when you're a kid that just wants to fit in. And, and, and all you're hearing are these messages about yeah. how it's shameful and weak and uh, disgraceful and wrong and not strong. And, uh, you know, I really do, uh, you know, I really feel for gay men. Or, uh, yeah, I guess gay women as well, but especially gay, gay men. Gay women, not so much. Yeah. Because they're not as ridiculed and and. Right. and, and persecuted for it yeah right. people aren't as threatened by them yeah 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 it does suck though it's a trite point but i think a, a point that's still worth making that the word is such 
a, an effective way of insulting things that yeah. ver that very often has little to do with actual homosexuality. Right. It's just a shame we can't fully divorce it from mm -hmm. like gay no longer means homosexual. It just means like if you want to say, oh, you got a, v a V6, that's pretty gay. Yeah. Nobody is saying I didn't say that. Nobody is saying your car makes you a homosexual or that your car's homosexual. We all know what we mean when we say that. Well, I think the word retard is taken on that exactly. same meaning. No yeah. doubt. Right. No doubt, right. right. Yeah, like if you have a RAV4, you're a retard. Mm -hmm. If you have a six-cylinder Mustang, you're yeah. gay. Yeah, you're gay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we gotta go. Greg, what is your special Get out of here. That's it? <laughs> yeah. You yeah. can stick around for Patreon Jesus if you want. Christ. I got a Patreon no. show. All right. Uh, the special's called uh, You Know Me. It's on YouTube. You can go to gregfitzsimmons.com for links and... Uh, my, uh, I got dates coming up in Alaska and San Alaska. Francisco. Yeah, I'm going to Fairbanks. Sick. Yeah, it's going to be great. That's awesome. And uh, Fitz Dog Radio and Sunday Papers are the podcasts. And uh, I love you guys. Always a great hang. We love Run you, fast. dude. Thanks for coming on the show. All right, man. Appreciate it. All right, see you guys later, everybody. Don't die. Don't die.